Welcome back to Cyber Sea of Galilee DSMME on this feast of the great Saint Matthew. Sister Mercedes, I noticed that you have some writing utensils and paper there on your swing and I caught you out here. What in the world are you doing? Are you trying to be like Saint Matthew or something? <laughs> I don't know if I could ever be as great as St. Matthew. I mean, he walked with the Lord and he knew him personally. I know him personally in a different way than St. <laughs> Matthew did. Um, but it's his feast day, so that's really exciting. And I get to be here at the Mother House that everybody's celebrating. Now, St. Matthew, we all know, is an evangelist. And he wrote his gospel, which has um, shows the fulfillment of the Jewish prophecies of Christ. That's kind of what his gospel is known for. And I think it's a beautiful way to think about the fact that you, a lot of ways you need to know where you come from and the foundation to understand where you are going and then to be able to fully be able to process that and encounter it the way God would want. Um, but then also there's the call of St. Matthew. And that's also a very beautiful thing to meditate and think about when it comes to St. Matthew himself when it comes to your own spiritual life. And it's this idea that there's conversion. And conversion doesn't erase your past. Conversion doesn't make the, your past go away. It converts it. <laughs> it makes it better. It restores it with grace so that you actually look at it in a different way. Mm. You have the memory of your past baptized in a different oh, I way. I like that, sister. So this, so the call of St. Matthew, St. Matthew was a task collector. Nobody liked him. The Jews didn't like mm -hmm. him. His family didn't like him. Nobody liked him. And yet he was called. And he was kind of called in this beautiful way that's almost like one of those lightning bolt ways. And I love the way it's depicted in Caravaggio's painting. It's, a, it's well known. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful because it has this whole moment where... Matthew's just looking down. He's looking down at the coins. There's movement everywhere. People see Christ. They see St. Peter. They're out on one side and they don't know what to do. Some are looking at Matthew like, you want that guy? Some are looking <laughs> around at each other, looking at Christ. But you look at Christ and there's actually not very much movement. There's a piece with Christ and he's pointing. He's pointing to Matthew. But I also want you to know that he's pointing to Matthew not in an accusatory way. He's pointing to Matthew not in a, I want you right there way. He's pointing mm. peacefully. He actually just had his Beautiful. hand lifted. And mm. it's very similar to the hand in Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. Mm. From the moment that the God the Father is giving life to Adam. Wow. And it's just this beautiful moment that was like this peaceful moment of grace where yes, grace like crashes into your life, but it's also gentle because it's a whisper. And that's how you hear him in the whisper. And even with St. Matthew, in that crash moment of grace, Caravaggio's interpretation of it is beautiful because just the light is coming out and the grace is just coming lightly out of the hand of our Savior, thus converting him, thus changing his past into what's beautiful and what we get to see, fulfilling the prophecies of the Jewish people. Just all in that moment coming together within Matthew and his life. And that's so beautiful. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Yeah, we are going to have a much you. more beautiful celebration today. Absolutely. Um, because of this feast day. And thank you for taking us on the Cyber Sea of Galilee today and telling us all about the great St. Matthew. Yeah, wonderful pleasure. God bless you all. We're praying for you. That's for sure. <laughs> Sign off from Cyber Sea of Galilee, DSMMA.